iHeartRadio presents Podversations, a weekly discussion with the biggest names and influencers in podcasting. Hey there, and welcome to another conversation as part of our iHeart Podcast Speaker Series, where we get together with one of our favorite podcasters each week. I'm Will Pearson, president of iHeart Podcast. Today, we're joined by one of my favorite podcasters, somebody we've worked with for a few years now, has done actually a few shows with us. Of course, starting out with the massively popular Noble Blood podcast. The podcast looks at the true and tragic stories of history's royals. These are some of the most fascinating, bizarre stories you've never heard. You sort of wondered why you didn't hear about them in your history class, but you're glad to learn about them now. And then today we'll also be talking about Stealing Superman, this fantastic new podcast. But first, I have to congratulate our guest today because she has written a book that has become a bestseller. It is called Anatomy, A Love Story. Actually, my daughter has been binging this book recently. You'll see it here. And look, the Reese Witherspoon YA Book Club Award. Dana, congratulations on this. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. And thank you so much. I feel like the fact that your daughter's reading it, that's like the highest praise in the world. I'm, I'm truly honored. It's fantastic. So we're, we're, we're glad to have you here. And also I, I assume when you get this sticker that Reese just shows up and, and actually puts it on the book, is that how that works or what? <laughs> I wish that she shows up to my house and puts a sticker on my chest, like an I voted sticker. Yeah. No, it was just like, it's like the best call you ever get from your agent when you find out like, that the, you know, one of your favorite actresses and someone who has like promoted reading and has run this incredibly important book club and elevated female voices that she like read your book, which is astonishing in itself and then liked it, which is crazy. And then like the, the genuine honor of, of being part of the book club was just like, it was just the best day, but no, I, I had no idea. I sort of, they whispered like, okay, they like Reese has it. She's going to read it. And then when they uh, let me know she picked it for the book club, it was, yeah, just like the best phone call I've ever gotten. <laughs> That's amazing. And to be able to call yourself a New York Times bestseller, which I know you do every time you meet someone, you say, I'm Dana, yes. New York Times bestseller. Yeah. Yes. Well, my parents do whenever right. they introduce me to anyone. <laughs> I don't doubt that, actually. Uh, and I failed to mention at the top, what we'll be talking about today in just a minute is your new podcast, Stealing Superman. But before we get to that... Um, we do have to talk about Noble Blood because you've got this massive fan base. It's been a runaway hit for us. Just a lot of fun to see how well it's done for us. So for those that don't know, can you sort of go back to the beginning and talk about how the idea for Noble Blood came about? When was that? Was that like four or five years ago? It's been a God, Yeah, a it must have been like five years ago, four, yeah. maybe four years ago. Yeah. Um, pre, pre-pandemic, obviously. Mm-hmm. So it's like all time just dissolves into the ether. What it really came about was, was I, for a while was like, I took pride in not having a podcast. I'm like, well, I, everyone else has one. I don't need to do it. But the thing is, I just genuinely love historical Royals and these stories from history. And I found myself just gravitating toward like reading these biographies and boring all of my friends with, uh, stories that I learned that I was just obsessed with talking about. And I tweeted something like, okay, how do I make a podcast where I just talk about scandalous stories of Royal history and Aaron Mankey, who I became friendly with because I, uh, I had covered his show. I obviously was a listener of lore and Mm -hmm. knew him on social media. And then I had covered lore as a TV show back when I worked at entertainment weekly. So we were already friendly. He was like, okay, send me a proposal. And so immediately I was like, Oh my God. And I wrote up a proposal and he helped me uh, put it together and sent it to the good people at iHeart and and the rest is history. I mean, I it's a scripted podcast. So early on, I mean, it was definitely a labor of love to do mm-hmm. research for a brand new topic every other week and write a full script and record it. But I, it feels like a privilege, like I've learned so much and it's felt very gratifying that we've had this slow and steady fan base that have come with us this whole time. Yeah, I think one of the things people definitely pick up on very quickly if they listen to Noble Blood is how intensely researched the show is. I mean, you know, we've got a lot of podcasts that range from the highly unscripted to the tightly scripted. And um, this one has just such a beautiful flow to it. But at the same time, you can tell you've put a ton of time into it. Can you talk about that process? I mean, is that exhausting to, to research every single one of these episodes? Yeah. Yeah. You know, sometimes 
Mm-hmm. I try to find, I think that the the tone of the podcast has shifted, you know, in the more than a hundred episodes that I've done since the, the beginning of it, where I think early on, I gravitated maybe more novelistic and more descriptive and like florid than I am now. So I, it took me maybe a few episodes to find the style that I sort of landed on. But I think the thing that keeps it exciting for me is trying to make it feel like a treasure hunt, like yeah. trying to figure out like, okay, well, what is the truth here? What do we know here? And sort of the North star that I keep coming back to in any episode is I think if this is interesting for me, it'll be interesting mm-hmm. to listeners. And so I try not to write episodes or, or read episodes that don't feel genuinely interesting to me because I'm like, this is the thing that I'm obsessed with. And if I don't find this interesting, no one will. So if I'm bored, I try to take a step back and think like, okay, well, maybe this is just boring and I need to readjust. So I I do try to keep it exciting. Now I feel, you know, three years into the podcast, I'm lucky enough to work with um, a handful of really amazing writers and researchers, which helped me have that other perspective on things Mm -hmm. because before it was always just me reading and being like, well, this is what I think on it. And now it does feel more sometimes like the scripts are a conversation between a few different sensibilities, which I love because history isn't, you know, something that's so cut and dry. History is in the analysis and interpretation. It's amazing how huge this is as a category, just in general, in, in podcast. I mean, one of the biggest podcasts in the world is Stuff You Missed in History Class, which we've been publishing for over a decade now, ridiculous history. Of course, you mentioned Aaron Mankey and that he has just a handful of incredible podcasts, usually falling in the, the history space. And when he reached out and said, I think we should take a look at this show from, from Dana Schwartz. Of course, you and I had crossed paths in the past at, at Mental Floss and a couple other times. So as soon as we saw it, we were like, we know Dana Schwartz, this is going to be incredible. And so <laughs> we were excited to uh, to bring it on. But but also excited that it's not the only podcast that we get to to work with you on. I know that we uh, we don't necessarily have a lot of other podcasts on royalty, but we sort of made this weird leap to you might say Hollywood royalty and the types of stories that we've we've been thinking about. So before we get to stealing Superman, our, our first experience with you and doing more of the limited run uh, type podcast was with Haleywood. So we started yeah. talking to you about this idea. It was a hit, but can you talk a little bit about that podcast? Oh my God, it was so fun. Uh, so Jason English, who I work with at at iHeart came to me with this story uh, that this writer, Jake Rosen, sort of un- unraveled mm-hmm. about Bruce Willis, the biggest superstar in the 90s and obviously arguably one of the biggest like remaining movie stars tried to retreat from public life more or less by buying land in this tiny town near Sun Valley in Idaho called Haley. And then over the course of, you know, months to years, he began kind of remaking the town in in his image and sort of turning it into his like perfect little playground. And it's just this fascinating story that uncovers so much of what I find fascinating about royalty Mm -hmm. in the context of of a Hollywood celebrity, which is money, power, control, fame, like what eyeballs do when when you are constantly under scrutiny. And it's just this the story is is unbelievable. And so many people haven't even heard of it where when you say immediately like, oh, did you know that like Bruce Willis was buying up town and and building this tiny town in Idaho. People are like, what are you talking about? I had never heard that before. Yeah. So immediately I was hooked and I I had this, this great experience because for Noble Blood, obviously with each episode, it's 30 minutes or so, and it's a deep dive into one topic, Mm -hmm. but it was such a fun and gratifying experience to spend longer in this, in a story, to let that story breathe to to meet the characters and let the story unravel step by step. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, absolutely, and and I guess you could say the uh, the next podcast that you were thinking on was was somewhat of a, a spiritual sequel, I guess, and that that's the yeah. Stealing Superman podcast. Um, yeah, also one that I had never heard the story for, and 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 that's that's again what one of my favorite parts about the types of shows we think about with you is, you know, you you find these sort of big splashy headlines. 
of a thing like Bruce Willis bought a town and, you know, Nick Cage had this, you know, incredible comic book stolen. But can you talk a little bit about Stealing Superman, the premise behind it, the story there? And then I also want to talk about some of the other characters in it, but but maybe just tee it up first. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Nicolas Cage, the eccentric Hollywood actor, is minorly obsessed with comic books and superheroes. I mean, he sort of made no secret about that. His stage name Cage comes from Luke Cage. Uh, and in the late 90s, he bought some of the rarest comic books there are, including an issue of Action Comics number one, which is the uh, first appearance of Superman. At the time, it was several hundred thousand dollars. Now that comic is worth millions. But around a Y2K party that Nicolas Cage threw, the comic was stolen. Mm. And so this podcast is a miniseries that goes into that crime itself, the the uh, way that the comic was stolen and how, I, without spoiling anything, what happens to it afterward. Mm -hmm. But also our fixation on fame, on iconography, Superman as a figure and a metaphor in pop culture, the origin of Superman. It just uses that story to touch on so many fascinating aspects of modern culture. It's just an irresistible story. Yeah. Actually, one of my favorite parts about it are those that are sort of adjacent to the celebrity that brings you into the podcast. Like I was saying, you know, whether it's a Bruce Willis or a Nicolas Cage, but in the case of Stealing Superman, you know, you're you're looking at his his comic book dealer or his assistant or his body double. And I'm curious yeah. for you, like, what is it about their stories that that really draws you in and sort of makes this this broader story so rich? I mean, these were people who are on the ground floor. I also love any any story and any person who can expose a world that feels completely new to me. Mm -hmm. I had no idea, you know, in in theory, I knew that rare comic books were a lucrative and and profitable trade. But this entire subculture that's existed sort of beyond this beyond the surface of of regular life is just so deeply fascinating to me. It's these parallel lives that are happening in concert to ours. Like everyone loves Superman in movies and the whole subculture of collecting these comics and how valuable these action comic number ones are. It was just fascinating. It felt like getting to explore an entirely new world. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, what what other other teasers can you put out there about it? I want I don't want to I don't want to ruin the story for people, but yeah. what are some of the most interesting parts for you in, in putting the podcast together? Oh gosh. I mean, I think the actual theft is fascinating just yeah. because we get a taste of Nicolas Cage's uh taste in architecture, which is, you know, uh interesting. And the fact that he left comics uh unlocked because yep. i like to show them off to guests <laughs> but also we we talk to a real art thief who walks us through kind of the logistics of stealing art and then the ways in which people either resell move or sit on it and that was also just fascinating to be able to to hear from someone who has been there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when, when you're creating a podcast, you know, obviously we talked at the beginning about your best-selling book and, you know, creating podcasts, you've written for a lot of magazines. I'm curious what it is about podcasting, if at all, that, that feels different than the craft of say writing a novel. How, how are these, how do these exercise different parts of your brain or how is the experience a little different from, from medium to medium for you? I think one thing I love is how immediate podcasting is and how mm -hmm. intimate it is. Yeah. With book writing, yes, it's you writing the finished product, but it goes through months of editing and copy editing. And then the book comes out and it's, you know, in a physical form and readers can read and interpret and think of it however they want. There, There's a distance between mm -hmm. you and the end product. And for television, it's even further. You're writing a script that then goes through so many layers of right. not only networks, but directors and actors. And then production and then ends up on the screen, you know, m months, but more likely years later, something about podcasting is so intimate. It does feel like I'm talking to someone. I get to share something I find interesting and 
within a few weeks, people get to hear it. So mm -hmm. I, I do really love that. I love how intimate it is. I love how immediate it is, how this sounds strange uh, when it's heavily researched podcasts like Noble Blood or uh, Stealing Superman, but how informal to a certain degree it is because I get to talk. I mean, I'm just yeah. in my closet and I do like to feel like I'm just talking to people and telling them these interesting stories. Yeah, I think that's part of the the charm of the the shows that you've done to this point is, is you're right. You can tell that they are, like, like we said, intensely researched, but at the same time, it does feel like you're just you're just hearing you tell a story, which is uh, which is sort of podcasting at its best. So so we've talked about the shows that you've done, and I know you're always noodling on on new ideas. Uh, anything else in the Hollywood royalty space, you know, from from Bruce Willis to Nicolas Cage? Is there some other sort of eccentric uh, Hollywood celebrity you want to think about for the next one? Oh, gosh, there is no shortage of eccentric Hollywood celebrities. Uh, but I will I'll let you know when I when I find a good one. Yeah, that sounds good. So were you early to the podcast game? Like, have you been a podcast listener for a long time? Or has this been more the last few years as you decided to, to jump in as a creator? I was always a podcast listener. But yeah. no, I was I was late to the to the creating game. Uh, my husband has had a podcast for like 10 years. It's wild. He is, you know, been podcasting forever, but I I was relatively recent. I only wanted to to start a podcast if I really cared about the subject matter. But no, I I love listening to podcasts. Um, I think because I hate being alone with my thoughts for even one second. Right. <laughs> and what so, about? Uh, I think we I think I can identify with that. And, and yeah. what about the uh, what about the book side of things? What what's up next for you there? I have a new novel, uh, Immortality, A Love Story, which is the sequel to Anatomy that's coming out in February and it's available for pre-order now. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, always love catching up with you, hearing what you're up to. So hope everybody will check out, of course, Noble Blood, if you haven't already, and then Stealing Superman, which is out now and it is doing really, really well. By the way, congratulations. Seems to keep popping in the rankings. It's been pretty fun to see, huh? Oh, yeah, it's the best. It's so fun. Well, thank you so much for spending a few minutes with us. Dana, it's always good to see you and uh, we'll see everybody again next week. Thank you so much. What a pleasure. Podversations is a production of iHeartRadio. You can find more from the biggest names in podcasting on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts.